Welcome to another experience with Methodist Voices in Word and Song Television Ministry. We are so happy you could join us. Ash Wednesday signals the start of the penitential season of 40 days we call Lent. During this time, we engage in preparation for the celebration of Resurrection Lord's Day or Easter through much prayer, fasting, and acts of love. Today is the first Lord's Day in the season of Lent. Let us now join in worship. The choristers will lead us in the introit, Me Alone in the Wilderness. Let us now share in the call to worship. The season of Lent can be filled with testing and hardships. But God goes with us through the wild wilderness. Our lives are lived in seasons of transitions and transformations. Lent is a time to ponder God's providence and persistence. Together we seek fruitfulness, for it has been promised to us. The barrenness of Lent will give way to the fruitfulness of Easter. In this season of penitence and pondering, let us gather before God. We come as a family to wait for the Lord with strength and courage. Come, let us worship God. We gladly join you in worshiping the Lord. We sing the hymn, My God, how wonderful thou art, numbered 38 in our Voices in Praise hymnal. Let us now join in the prayer for purity. Let us all pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts, hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from, from whom, whom no secrets are hid, cleanse, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Let us remind ourselves of the commandments of Jesus. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. And a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these your laws in our hearts, we beseech you. Let us engage in the act of confession. Let us ask God to forgive us of our sins. We spend a moment in quiet reflection. Let us confess our sins together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against each other in thought and word and deed, in the, the evil we have, we have done and in the, the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. God is faithful and will not allow us to be tempted beyond our abilities. Even in our brokenness, God provides a path to wholeness. When we confess our shortcomings, God has mercy on us and is generous with forgiveness. Through Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We now sing together the hymn, 40 Days and 40 Nights. It is numbered 78 in our Voices in Praise hymnal.
Let us now prepare our hearts to hear the word of God read for us. First, let us pray. Almighty God, God, whose Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ fasted, fasted 40, 40 days in the wilderness, wilderness and, and was, was tempted, tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes to us from Deuteronomy chapter 26, reading from verse 1 to 11. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me as we share in the responsive reading of Psalm 91 reading verse 1 to 2 and 9 to 16. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it, it was, was in, in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, now and, and ever shall be, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. We continue in the reading of the epistle, Romans 10, verse 8b to 13 and the Gospel, Luke chapter 4, verse 1 to 13. 
The epistle comes to us from the book of Romans, chapter 10, reading from verse 8b through to 13. The word is near to you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who called on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel comes to us from St. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. Glory to you, O God. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days. And when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over me to me and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ, our Lord. Our sermon will be delivered by Bishop the Reverend Everell Galbraith, Connectional President. My brothers and sisters in Christ, good afternoon. I bring you greetings and wish you well as we journey through this year and especially through this Lenten season. The message this afternoon is overcoming temptations in our wildernesses. Luke chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this moment, and we pray now that as we listen to the spoken word, you will grant us the aid of your Holy Spirit to hear and apply these words and your message to our hearts. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. When we are committed to Jesus, the enemy will try every possible means to bring us down. However, if we lean on the word and the promises of God, we can withstand and overcome every fiery darts of the enemy. That was Jesus' experience and an example for us. Luke tells us that after his baptism, 
Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit and under the control and guidance of the Holy Spirit, he was ushered into a deserted and barren place. Jesus was there for 40 days and 40 nights. And during that period, he was tempted by the devil. And perhaps God was silent. Luke says, at the end of the period, Jesus was famished. And I believe he was exhausted. Yet the devil attacked him with three temptations. The first two temptations to turn stones into bread and worship the devil, Jesus responded by quoting scriptures. In the final temptation, the devil twisted Psalm 91 as he sought to question and plant seeds of self-doubt in Jesus' mind. The devil wanted Jesus to doubt his divine sonship. However, Jesus triumphed because Jesus was confident about who he was and had no need to doubt that he was the son of God. After all 40 days earlier, God said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus knew God and trusted God. Luke said, the devil departed from him until an opportune time. My dear sisters and brothers, the Christian life is not a bed of roses. It is not. We have our mountaintop experiences, but there are also times when we are plunged and drawn into deep valleys and wildernesses. COVID-19 pandemic has brought on many wilderness experiences for most of us. Our wildernesses can be times of loneliness, quarantine, bereavement, frustration, terminal illness, disappointments. There are times when things are unclear, uncomfortable and confusing. Times when we feel, when we have left our comfort zones and safety, but haven't reached a place of clarity and contentment. Those middle places can be intimidating exhausting, discombobulating, and overwhelming. In our wilderness experiences, we are usually tempted to discard our faith and trust in our loving and caring God who is omnipresent. Our readings today tell us that we must have faith in God. And regardless of how desperate we are or how confusing the situation is, we can and must maintain our trust and confidence in God and in God's words. The gospel speaks about entering the wilderness, entering the wilderness. Luke says, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. It is significant, isn't it, that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into that location. Sometimes God leads us into that place of testing. However, sometimes we wonder into the wilderness. Sometimes we refuse to listen to God. We keep the wrong company. We follow the wrong crowds. Sometimes we are in our disobedience and stubbornness. 
we land into the wilderness. Whether we enter the wilderness as a consequence of our stubbornness, carelessness, bad decisions, divine guidance, or accident, once there we must recognize where we are. Wilderness experiences are integral to our human and Christian realities. In this journey, we enter so often and pass through so often the wilderness. And secondly, testing in the wilderness. Luke says Jesus was tempted by the devil. Interestingly, the phrase to tempt is normally used to mean to lead astray. However, in Matthew, in his record of the temptations, it means to test, to test. And that seems a better understanding. In the NIV, this section is captioned, Jesus is tested in the wilderness. So Jesus was being tested as he prepared to commence his public ministry. In the wilderness, Jesus faced a series of temptations designed to test him. They provided him with opportunities to sort out his priorities and to clarify how he would accomplish his God-sent mission. He was offered free opportunities to walk away from God's plan for his life. Three opportunities. The first targeted his willingness to disrespect and manipulate creation for his own satisfaction. He was tempted to disregard sto the stone's intrinsic value, beauty, and goodness and cheat his way to personal satisfaction by turning stones into bread. In the second, the devil tempted him to be visible, to be applauded, to be admired and envied. The temptation to come front and center and get out of obscurity. Let the world see you and see what you can do. In the third temptation, the enemy tempted Jesus to expose himself to the vulnerabilities of life. And God will keep him secure. Because, after all, he is God's son. God will keep him safe from physical and emotional harm. Friends, we too are often bombarded with invitations to satisfy our own selfish desires by using and abusing others and our environment. Look at what is happening in Ukraine today by the Russians. We are often tempted, aren't we, to seek popularity at all costs. And often we believe that because we are Christians, we are invincible. Nothing can happen to us because after all, God will protect us. Just trust in God and do as you please. No harm will come to you. These are tests. Tests that every child of God, like Jesus, must resist. Must resist. They will come to us. They will come to us when we think we are strong. They will come to us when we think we are weak. But we must resist them because they are not of God. Thirdly and finally, in the wilderness, the power of God's word 
in the wilderness. The power of God's word in the wilderness. In the first temptation, in the first temptation, Jesus said, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. In the second temptation, Jesus said, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And in the third and final temptation, after Jesus had spent 40 days being tempted, Jesus again turned to the scripture and says, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. By so doing, Jesus successfully resisted the devil with the word of God and left the wilderness with confidence to fulfill his ministry. It pays, my sisters and brothers, it pays to know the Son, but it also pays to know the Word. Jesus confronted temptation with the uncorrupted power of God and the unadulterated Word of God. He relied on God and God's way rather than the alternatives which were being put to him. Our best and most reliable weapon against doubt and the deception of the devil is the power of God and the word of God. We must know and apply the word of God in the barrenness of our lives always. God's word, we are told, is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it does not lie. It does not lie. Jesus overcame the temptations, the testing by the power of God in his life and the word of God in his heart. And so in conclusion, if those 40 days in the wilderness were a time of recognition, a time for Jesus to decide who he was and how he would live out his calling, then Jesus chose emptiness over fullness. He chose obscurity over popularity. He chose vulnerability over rescue. At every instance when Jesus could have reached for the magical, for the glorious, and for the safe, he reached instead for the mundane, the invisible, and the risky. Our lives have or will have wildernesses. They are part of what it means to be human. In the wilderness, we will be tempted to abandon our faith and our trust in God. However, let us lean on the word of God and trust God and God's way. The Holy Spirit will equip us with the fortitude to overcome and remain steadfast. The wilderness will not last, but God and God's word will last and last forever. And you and I and all God's children will overcome the testings and temptations of this world. For Christ's sake, amen. As we engage now in an act of meditation, I invite you to sing prayerfully, I need thee every hour. It is number 282 
in our Voices in Praise hymnal. We give thanks to all who continue to support this ministry by viewing and participating actively in the televised services. We remind you that this worship experience is designed to engage you in active worship on screen. As such, we ask that weekly as the hymns are announced and passages are read, you will use your hymnals and Bibles to stay engaged. Sing read the scriptures and pray with us as you are prompted on screen as if you are in the physical space. For your convenience, we share the orders of service used each time with all who will receive. If you are not already on our mailing list, please request the order at mainoffice at jamaicamethodist.org and as you are seeing on screen. Each Lord's Day at 1.30 p.m. when we gather online, we can make the worship experience more meaningful by resisting the urge to engage in other tasks while we worship. And where possible, to give full attention to God and so receive the blessings reserved for you and your loved ones. We announce that the long-awaited fundraising concert for the Methodist Connection will be held on Sunday, April 24 at 4 p.m. as a virtual event. Please save the date. We will advise you in short order on how you may participate. We are so grateful to you for your contribution to this ministry and its upkeep on air. Please make note of contact details 
on screen to make your financial contribution to this effort. We need your support. Let us now give thanks for what we have already received and what we anticipate you will offer for this wonderful work. Let us pray. God who provides, we bless your name for your gifts freely given to us. We are ever mindful that what we possess really belongs to you and that we are merely stewards of these tangible gifts in serving others till you return. We thank you for those who continue to share in the work of proclaiming the good news of salvation through television, the internet, and the World Wide Web by the offering of their time, talent, and resources. We ask your blessing on the gifts we have received and those we anticipate. We further ask that you help us all to be faithful and to teach us to manage these resources to advance the work of your kingdom. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us now share in prayers of intercession. God of mercy and love, let us serve you in our world. We pray for desert people who live in a dry, parched land, who lack water, who travel constantly so that they might live. Give them living water. Let the deserts bloom into flower. God of mercy and love, let us serve you in our world. We pray for countries where justice seems far away, where human rights are ignored. Let us remind those in power that prisoners are not forgotten. We pray that the dignity of life is respected and remember those who have lost that dignity through age or infirmity or neglect. God of mercy and love, let us serve you in our world. We pray for those who have no peace, for those who are troubled and torn apart by lack of self-esteem, for those who torment and victimize the vulnerable. We pray for men and women affected by violence in the home and for those who live by violence. God of mercy and love, let us serve you in our world. Loving Lord, let us not stand aside and tolerate lack of basic human resources, dehumanizing practices, or the use of violence to disempower your people. Remember those engaged in warfare and those whose lives have changed drastically from residents to refugees. Remember today the people of Ukraine and other parts of the world. Give us strength to act and challenge hatred, greed, and the abuse of power in order to bring about your justice and mercy. In your name, we humbly ask that we may be a, a channel for your peace and your love. Amen. Amen. Let us join the choristers as we share in the Lord's Prayer. Number 25 from our Voices in Praise hymnal. As we prepare to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, we invite those of you with prayer books to turn to page 76. For those who are homebound, again, we 
advised that a table covered with clean white cloth should stand in a convenient place in your room. Bread, baked or bought, cut in sufficient small pieces so that each communicant in your space can receive. The wine, preferably grape juice or water, be placed on the table with the bread and covered with a clean white cloth at this time. In our preparation, let us sing together, Jesus, take away all we sin, numbered 431 in our Voices in Praise hymnal. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and fitting so to do. It is a good and pleasant thing, joyful and salutary, always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise, Lord God, ever-living, ever-blessed, almighty, or loving. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, you created all things and made us in your image. And when we had fallen into sin, you gave him to be our Savior. He shared our human nature and lived a fully human life. He suffered rejection and condemnation and died on the cross. You raised him up from the dead, and you exalted him to the glory of your right hand, where he reigns forever as priest and king and makes intercession for us. In witness of his glory and honor, you poured out the Holy Spirit, building up many people into one body, making us living members of your holy church, and enabling us to stand before you to sing your praises and celebrate your mighty acts. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we join in the hymn of everlasting praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in, in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, when the night in which he was betrayed took bread into his holy hands, and looking up to heaven, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Father, in obedience to his command, we do this in remembrance of him, praying that you will accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive your gifts of bread and wine may share in the body and blood of Christ and become united with him. And as we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, we pray that you will bring us with your whole creation to your heavenly kingdom. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. To, to whom, whom with you, O Father, Father in, the in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be all, all honor and, and glory from, from all who dwell, dwell on earth, earth and in heaven throughout the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Amen. The cup of blessing which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Amen. Though we are many, we are one body because we share the one loaf and partake of the same drink. Lord, we, we come, come to your table, table trusting in your, in your mercy, mercy and, and not in any goodness of our own. own. We, we are not worthy to gather up the crumbs on your table, table but, but it is your nature always to have mercy, and, and on that we depend. We depend. So, so feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, your son that, that we may forever live in him, and, and he in us. In us. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ, I take and eat in remembrance that Christ's body was given, and I'm thankful. The blood of Christ, I take and drink in remembrance that Christ's blood was offered, and I'm thankful. Let us now share together as we celebrate in your home space and those elsewhere, reminding ourselves of the presence of Christ with us, represented by the symbols of bread and wine. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, keep you in eternal life. 
Take and eat in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, keep you in eternal life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Let us pray together. We thank, thank you, Lord, Lord, that you have, you have fed us, us in, in this sacrament, sacrament united, united us with Christ, Christ and, and have given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared, prepared for all mankind. humankind. Amen. Amen. We close with the singing of the hymn, that great hymn, A Safe Stronghold, Our God is Still. Numbered 280 in the Voices in Praise hymnal. Of course, Please follow on screen as you are able. Go in peace to love and serve God. As you pass through your wilderness experiences, remember God is with you. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>